Hey guys, it is me, Chris T, and today we have a very different video. I never planned on doing a video like this, but this just happened, so I decided to film the process anyways because it's kind of exciting, but also kind of very nerve-wracking, to be quite honest with you. So my friend Allie reached out to me recently. She said she was redoing one wall in her room, and she wanted to commission some of her artsy friends to do a painting or a drawing for that wall. And she reached out to me, since she knows I'm artsy, and she commissioned me to do this art piece. And I've never been commissioned before. I've never had commissions. I I don't even know what to charge for a commission, to be honest with you. Like, I have no idea. And I asked her, I was like, of course, I'm going to do this for you. Like, you're my friend. Like, I love you. I'm going to do that. But I told her, I was like, what do you want? <laughs> and she had no, no ideas. She said she just kind of wanted to be like an eight and a half by an 11 size so like the size of a computer paper or like an eight by eight inch uh painting or drawing i guess for her wall and she said she didn't have any ideas she wants me to be creative and free and do whatever i want she doesn't want the background to be pink because her wall is pink and then she said nothing like a hot dog because i asked her again i said are you sure you don't know what you want and she said i guess no hot dogs <laughs> so that's kind of all i have going for this right now which isn't a lot so yeah i'm about to start testing out some painting ideas i have some thoughts in my mind i've been thinking about it for the past week and i want to just kind of talk to you guys and tell you guys my thoughts but i'll at least turn the video around so you guys can watch and i'll just i'll keep doing this but you guys are just going to start watching me actually paint or draw or sketch i guess is the most appropriate term so first I wanted to talk about the pricing of this commission. I have no idea. I have none, not a single clue. I know commission prices is something that a lot of new artists struggle with, with their own pieces. And I know a lot of new artists have no idea. And I guess I am in that category of no idea. Some people would charge like $5 and some people would probably charge like $100 for the size of photo. And I have not a single idea because to be honest, you know, if any of my friends ever reached out to me and wanted a drawing, I'll do it like for free. <laughs> and I know, you know, being an artist, you should be paid for your art. That's like the goal. But it's so hard for me to do that. It's so hard for me to figure out what the value of an art piece is. So I've had some ideas. And at this point, you might already be me. Blah. And at this point, you might already be seeing me sketch out these ideas so the first thing that i thought was was what are her interests what are things that i know she likes so ali is great because she's a very simple person and that her interests are like the entirety that make up who she is <laughs> you know how there's some people who like you can never figure out like what they like ali has some very specific likes and i think it makes it a little bit easier because i can kind of pinpoint them so i know she's a big fan of diet coke <laughs> I don't know why that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of my friend Allie. The next thing that she's very into is all things spooky. She really likes horror flicks. She likes even like those B-grade scary movies. She likes Halloween. She loves dressing up. She loves cosplaying for Halloween and everything spooky. So she likes those witchy vibes, those kinds of things. Another thing about Allie is she is a vegetarian and she is very much so into the planet and giving back to the community. I was also thinking about it because I wasn't sure if I wanted to draw something that was like anime style because she doesn't really watch anime. And even though I'm such a big fan, I'm just trying to have the client in mind and I don't wanna just give them something that I don't think would relate to them at all. So that led me to the ideas that I had. I only really have two ideas, but I think uh, there are two that I can kind of play around with a little bit more. So the first idea, which I probably already sketched at this point since I've been talking forever, is a squirrel or some squirrels. So the reason a squirrel, because I know that seems very, very random, she actually really likes squirrels. And I actually really like squirrels too. That's one of those animals that me and her both equally like. That's kind of like a weird animal, but like funny that we both like it. And uh, squirrels are so cute. I love their big fluffy tails and there's their cute little faces and everything about them. They're just so precious. So I thought that painting a squirrel in gouache with some type of like greenery background would be nice. I've been watching a lot of Lee Alexan videos. I love her art style. I really love her artwork. I've been thinking that it'd be cool to draw more animals because I think even with like my anime 
styled artworks, it would be cool to incorporate more animals into my pieces. I like drawing koi fish a lot, which I think you guys seen me draw a few times. So being able to draw more animals would obviously be super cool. And I thought the squirrels would be so much fun to draw. I'm very interested in drawing them. And there's so many different types of squirrels. There's red squirrels, there's black squirrels, there's gray squirrels, there's like brown squirrels. <laughs> so I thought that might be a good idea to play around with. Maybe one squirrel with just like a greenery background or multiple squirrels. So my mind is like, that would be really cool and fun. But there's another part of my mind that's like, I'm being commissioned and might be getting paid. So I should do something that's more detailed and more difficult and something that'll probably be a lot more struggle later on down the line. I don't know why I like to torture myself like this, but as an artist, I think we all kind of tortured ourselves sometimes in our thinking. But the other idea that I had, which I'm really fond of, I had the squirrel idea and I've been running on that for a few weeks or for the majority of the week. And then just recently, I think yesterday, I thought, oh my goodness, I think I know what the perfect thing could be that would incorporate me and Allie. And it'd be like really nice blend that she might actually really love. So if you guys know of the lo-fi hip hop mixes on YouTube, you know that anime picture of that girl who's wearing the headphones sitting at a desk? I don't know why I'm explaining it to you guys. I'll just pop up a picture on the screen. So that image, that's such a great image and as you guys probably know people who have done different video mixes or even on instagram people have recreated this drawing a bunch of times with like different characters with their own style and it's just a, such a fun picture to recreate in your own style because there's so much going on in the background and it's so simple and it's so great and it's i don't know i really like that drawing or that painting so i was thinking how cool would it be if i did that same style of picture and made my friend Allie the focal point. So made Allie the girl in the picture. I can kind of do a little bit more of my anime style with that. And then in the background have all of her things. So like maybe have her reading a Stephen King book and then put a Coke bottle, a Diet Coke bottle on her desk and then put some movie titles in the background and play around with like putting a little keychain of her dogs on like a book bag or something. And I was just like, Honestly, that's just perfect because it would really incorporate all of her favorite things into one piece and it'd feel super personal to her and it'd be super detailed, which is something that I've been wanting to do more art of, like detailed pieces. But yeah, I think that's enough rambling for me. I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing now so you guys can see that process and we'll see what, what happens. We'll hope for the best, yes. And then I'll check back in periodically because I think this is gonna take a few days. Okay, so I didn't record myself painting these two or three pieces, but um, the reason for that is because obviously these are still just sketches. I just kind of wanted to try out some colors before I move on to like the final thing, and I just wanted to see what I wanted to do. And I'm honestly sitting with these for quite a few hours, I think maybe like three hours, where I was just kind of like messing around, but also like diddling on my, my computer. So I want to say that I think I'm going to go with this one just because it's obviously the more detailed one and I can definitely add more elements that are like my friend into this one. Whereas these ones, although they were a lot of fun, they seem a little bit too simplistic for my brain to give it off as like a commission piece. I know, I don't know why I struggle with that, but I do. So I think I want to go with this one. I will say these two I painted with my gouache and this one I painted with watercolor. I really like the gouache colors. I really think they came out nice and vibrant. Like even just looking at these pages together, this one looks so much more like pop of color than this one. So those are my thoughts, but look at the squirrels. They're so cute. And then my washi tape ripped this up, which kind of sucked, but yeah, I really, I really like how vibrant the orange is with the gouache with the background and so I'm still thinking about it but anyways enough about that what I think I'll do is I'll start recording me drawing the final sketch getting some paper together figuring all that out and then we'll paint it yeah yeah
Okay, voiceover time, and as you can see, I didn't actually film myself sketching this out, and the reason for that is, one, I hold my pencil really weird, and as you probably saw when I was doodling in my sketchbook, you can hardly see what I'm doing anyways because of the way I hold it. I blame this on being lefty, but what can you do? Second, I knew this video was going to be pretty long regardless, so cutting that out just made sense since you already saw me sketch a draft of this, and I thought the painting process would be more interesting for this final piece anyways. Now, before we get into the details of the commission itself, I wanted to talk about what you're seeing me paint right now. So that yellow block of color that I'm putting in the background, that is an underpainting. And the reason I did this is because I wanted a cohesive look for the entire piece. And with watercolor, this makes sense to do in the beginning. I think with inks, you can easily do this at the end. And even in digital, you can do this at the end with like an overlay. But in watercolor, since you always risk lifting up previous layers of paint, it's best to do this at the beginning. And the reason I wanted to do that with this piece is because I knew I was going to be using almost every color of the rainbow, but I wanted the piece overall to have a very distinctive tone that tied in everything together. And even though it's very light yellow and it doesn't seem to be that important, I really think it ties in the colors. Of course, if I did a side-by-side -side comparison with a piece without this underpainting, you'd probably see it a little bit better. But trust me on this one, the underpainting works wonders for tying in your color scheme and making everything have this very cohesive look. I also enjoy this because that means no area of this piece is left unpainted. Even the whites that I left blank will always have this yellow sheen and they won't actually be the white of the paper, which I really, really enjoyed. In my sketchbook, I mentioned how much I liked the vibrancy of the gouache paint that I was using. And even though this was true, I knew it made more sense for the final piece to go in with watercolor. For starters, I'm more experienced with watercolor, so that just makes the most sense for me as an artist. But second, the gouache paints that I have are the Hemi gouache set, and that is definitely a student grade paint. I can't speak for the light fastness or for the durability, or even if it would have given me very smooth results on a final piece. Whereas my watercolor set is a core set, and that is a professional quality paint, and they are built to, to last, they're light fast, and they're just better paints overall. Also, the paper that I used is Arches watercolor paper, which is acid free and is built to last without yellowing. So I knew for something that I was going to sell that I want to last a long time since it's an original piece, this just made the most sense for me. Speaking of supplies, I do have absolutely every single supplies I use for this final piece in the description box below, including the type of pencil I sketch with and even the eraser that I use for this piece. So if you have any questions on what I use, it's all in the description and I think I can recommend just about everything. I really love working with the products that I have. So that'll be all there for you if you just wanted a reference. Now I will talk a little bit more about the painting process that you're seeing and go into details there. But before I do that, I wanted to step away to talk about commissions and this as a commission piece in general, because I'm pretty sure that's what everyone's most concerned about as this is a commission video. So like I said in the beginning, I didn't know what I wanted to charge for this and I thought that I would just tell her to give me whatever she thought was a good amount. And that is exactly what I did for this piece. I told my friend, you know, whatever, whatever you want to give me for this, I'll take it. Just nothing, nothing crazy. And I think that was a little bit difficult for her, but I was okay with that because since I had the stress of painting this, I think she could have had a little bit of stress on what to give me for this. And she did give me $50 for this piece. I thought that was perfect. Of course, I know for a piece like this, I could probably charge over $100, but since this was something for my friend and I had a lot of fun doing this anyways, I didn't want to take that from her. So I thought $50 was really, really a great price to get for this in general, and it was definitely more than even I would have expected. I probably could have gotten $20 for this and would have thought that that was accurate as well. So $50 was a nice amount to get. But I do want to mention, again, this was a friend that I was giving this to. I didn't even take a prepayment. I looked at some videos on YouTube about commissions and I, it did shape my ideas on if I was doing commissions as an artist in the future, how I would kind of structure things. I don't think I would get payment at the end. I think I would either try and get payment beforehand, all of it, or at least uh, sections of it, like half in the beginning, half at the end, or something of that sort, just because I do know that if you're trying to make a piece for a stranger, it would suck to make a piece that you didn't really want to make or that was specifically for that person and you didn't get any payment for it in the end. So I do think it makes sense to get prepayment if it's someone that you do not know. I also think that it is important to kind of have a contract of 
keeping the likeness of the image yours where they can't reproduce it and sell it themselves. I think that's that's a good way to kind of save yourself as an artist and make sure that someone's not profiting off of your work. And of course, I'm not sure that I would do commissions in general in the future, but I believe that it makes sense to have a set price. And I like what some people said to kind of take the average time that you think it would take you to make a piece of certain details and give a price range for how much you want an hour and multiply that. So I can tell you this piece probably took me about seven hours. And so if I was thinking of seven hours and thinking of going with like the minimum wage in America, which is about 725, but if I just wanted to make a smooth number seven, you would go like seven times seven is 49. Of course, I think you would want to put in the supplies that you're using and even like brainstorming time. And with all of that included, you might you might get about a hundred dollars for I think like a piece like this especially with the amount of details and I think all of that is important to consider of course for me it wasn't something I considered with this because this is not a traditional type of commission this was something that a friend wanted so yeah that's just my thoughts if I were ever to do commissions kind of how I would structure it a little bit better going into the time I said this took me about seven hours and that is pretty accurate now all of this video clips I had to cut down and condense and I'm kind of glad that I recorded it because it kept me on track of how long it actually took me and I worked on this piece really slowly I'm really happy for that I knew that was something that I wanted to do with this I wanted to take my time I really wanted to have fun with it but also make sure that it came out well and that I wasn't rushing so I took a lot of breaks in between but from conception to drawing the sketches in my sketchbook to going into the final sketch and then going into the painting yeah that that took took quite a few quite a few hours <laughs> and as you can probably see I'm not using the watercolors in a traditional watercolor sense if that makes sense so I didn't use a lot of wet on wet techniques I didn't use a lot of flowy watercolor techniques that I think is really fun with watercolor I kind of use the watercolor as any other paints except keeping in mind that you have to go in with lighter values before you go in with darker values just because I wanted this piece to look very much so cohesive and solid and not loosey-goosey as I think watercolor is very fun to do with. That being said, I did use some wet on wet techniques in the background outside. I did even use some lifting techniques and especially on the chair that she's sitting on with the, with the shadows. But for the most part, I kind of went in with solid colors and then just went over it with another solid color. Going back into the painting process itself, now in my sketchbook, I definitely use a lot less colors. There was totally a cohesive vibe in the sketchbook. It was like red, orange, yellow, and then pops of green. It was very warm tone with green being like the only cool tone. But for the final piece, I didn't want to limit myself that much. Again, the reason why the underpainting was so important for me. And I wanted to use a, a broader range of colors, but keep it warm toned in a way so that was a little bit difficult in a sense but i think it all kind of tied in together one thing i knew i didn't want to do was have any one color just in one side or one block of the piece every single color i used i wanted to make sure that i used it more than once pretty much so i didn't just use purple in one place i knew if i used purple in one place i'd have to use it in another place and the same with every other color i would say the only thing that kind of broke this rule was her sweater but the sweater is pretty much a focal point it is the largest area of this piece where there's just one color in a block i would say the chair is kind of similar but again i used a gradient for the chair so the sweater is really just where there's going to be this one block of color and i don't paint this until the end but that was something that i was keeping in mind in this piece i incorporated a lot of what i'll call easter eggs of my friend ally and of course when she saw this she could see all the things that related to her and things that she liked and I won't go into all of those just because there are a lot of just things that are interesting to her and maybe not to you, but you can clearly see it. I mean, it's not that secretive. They're all just there on the image. But one Easter egg that I wanted to include that kind of incorporated me was the plant on her windowsill. So that plant is a Sansevieria or a mother-in-law's tongue or a snake plant. And that's just a plant that I have in my house, in my room. And I wanted to incorporate that kind of my way of saying, 
here's a piece of me to you. <laughs> So I know she likes plants as well, and I think she has a few plants, but I don't think she has a snake plant, but I just wanted to include my little plant there because I thought that would be fun and a little ode to myself, if that makes any sense. Honestly, I think the Easter eggs and just finding those details were the best thing about this. And it made me really think that if I were to do commissions in the future, it would be really fun if I can add things of my own little style or just little, little hidden gems in future pieces. Next, I want to say overall, I really, really love this piece. Again, I had a lot of fun painting it. I had a lot of fun with it. And I really think it came out quite great. That being said, I know it was not perfect. I can definitely tell you that there are some things that I definitely made mistakes on. And if I were to do this again, I would definitely fix. For starters, the perspective is a little bit off on the desk, especially with the laptop and the book. I'm not the great at perspective pieces, so doing something like this was definitely difficult and I can see that now and it's unfortunate, but I don't think I knew enough of how to change it in the moment to do so. I can even say that with her hair, the ones that are in the background of her hair, the way they loop, I don't necessarily enjoy the way I did that. I think it should have just all been straight down and then those curls that kind of loop behind her headphones, just the ones that you see in the front of her face that would have been better and did the background differently but of course i don't think there's ever such thing as a perfect anything which i think it's fine to see those those mistakes so that you can kind of think in your head okay if i were ever to do something like this again or even in a future piece how you want to make sure that you don't make those same mistakes but i do really like the posters in the background i think in terms of everything here those were the most fun things to paint and of course, this was something that was stolen from an image on Google, but looking at those colors and kind of tying it in with my color schemes and building up those layers slowly was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it. I think the It's Alive poster was just a tad bit more fun, but even the Jaws poster I think came out really cool and interesting in the end. Now, as we're getting close to the end of the painting process, there's a few things I needed to mention. One, I completely didn't film just one last portion of painting. I don't know what happened when I was looking back at my my videos. I was like, oh, I just didn't film the last colors that I did. Guess not. <laughs> so it wasn't even something that I lost or that got corrupted. I, for some reason, didn't film it. I guess after painting for about five hours, my brain was just like gone. And at some point I stopped recording and just didn't pick back up on the recording. So it will kind of end a little bit abruptly where I didn't put in last details on the sweater or on the Jaws poster and a few other background pieces. I'm sorry for that, but what can you do? Another thing that I knew I wasn't going to film and I didn't film was me doing the line work at the end because like the sketch, I knew I wanted to get really close to the paper and make sure that the details were there and take my time with it. So my head was completely over the painting and my hand was blocking everything. You wouldn't have seen anything anyway, so I promise you didn't miss much but it's a little unfortunate because I think those final details are what ties things together. So we're at the end of the painting process. Again, my apologies for not filming that last piece of painting. And of course you didn't see me put the line work in. But anyways, as you see, I have this really nice cool paper cutter that I'm using to cut this paper down to size and clean up the edges because in the Arches watercolor block, they have this like black edge to it so I just went ahead and cut that off right before I painted this image I went to the art supply store because there was a few things that I needed to pick up and while I was there I saw this paper cutter and I was like oh this would be nice because although I can cut decently straight with scissors you can never get as straight as just a straight edge paper cutter so I really like this it's very compact it's easy to use and it was the perfect size for the paper that I needed it to be to make sure that it fit and would cut what I needed it to cut and yeah, I think it turned out great. I really love the white edge of the washi tape that I use. And then of course I went ahead and signed it at the end because I knew I was finally finished with this piece. But at the end here, I just wanted to compare it with the sketch that I made in my sketchbook. I wanted to show you guys our humble origins and just compare it with the final piece. As you can see, my art style can just drastically change from one piece to the next. It kind of looks like two different people drew this just from how detailed the one is and how better one looks to the other. But I think when I'm in my sketchbook, I always like to be a little bit more loose anyways. So that's where you see that difference there. And as you can see, I definitely changed what colors I wanted to use. And even the posters in the background. At first it was gonna be Dracula and Frankenstein and I changed it to Jaws and I, I believe it's Night of the Living Dead, something like that. 
So yeah, there was a lot of changes, but I definitely think that the sketch really helped me put into perspective what I wanted to have. And overall, I'm just happy with how it came out. So yes, thank you guys for watching this video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.